Well, Azerbaijan, fire of life. Well, if you see life as fire, the important thing is uh, how brightly we burn <laughs> and how long. <laughs> as what we generally know as life is a combination of uh, a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy. As we sit here, our time is getting over. Hello? Hello? As we sit here, time is ticking away. What is ticking here is not the clock, it's the life. Time is… life is ticking away. If we sit here for ten minutes, it means we are ten minutes closer to our grave. If we are not conscious of this, then we will waste the most important ingredient of life, time. If time goes by, life goes by. In southern Indian languages, when somebody dies, we don't say, he died. We say, his time got over. That's what happened, time gets over for all of us. So when this is the nature of life, in this limited span of time, how to burn bright and how to burn long enough, essentially means life has to happen with a certain level of efficiency within ourselves, that it does not burn unnecessarily, it burns and it burns bright and it burns long as long as possible. So in this context, we are here at COP29, Last few years, last ten, fifteen years of this COP journey we've been watching and uh, I saw that everybody is constantly talking about catching carbon molecules in the atmosphere. I'm not saying it should not be done, yes it should be, but we're missing the fundamentals of our existence. In thinking of one problem, we're missing the most fundamental, let me go back a little bit of time. This time calculation is not mine. The scientists are saying, around a billion years ago, you know these days everybody is talking billions very easily, hello? Billion is no more a big number <laughs> So a billion years ago, a very smart all guy or fungi, we don't know which one, there's a dispute about that, one of them found a way to cook their food using solar energy. Today we call that photosynthesis. When we say photosynthesis, it is a phenomena of using sun's energy and making food for one's own life. A green leaf does that, from that every other life flourishes. In this, there are various levels of life. Of course, we are here as human beings. We have other mammals, we have reptiles, we have insects, we have worms, we have microbial life. Microbial life is the largest number. If we go by really existential democracy, they would win the any election on the planet. Hello? Because their numbers are in zillions. And they are the foundational life. When I say foundational life, for every other life, the basis is microbial life. As we sit here, over sixty percent of our body is of microbes. Only forty percent is of our parental genetics. Like a, a mother who had an eight-year-old girl was telling me, Sadhguru, she doesn't listen to what I say. She's doing her own things at the age of eight. I said, see, please tell your mother she's only twenty percent. Another twenty percent is father. Sixty percent are microbes. Fundamental life constantly buzzing within us. Nobody is listening. If only we were listening to that life, we would just know what to do with this world. Right now, every simple thing is such a big confusion, 
If you ask anybody anything, they will say the data, where is the data, where is the evidence? Well, if you want evidence, let's say in a homicide case, if you want evidence, that happens only after the murder. Hello? <laughs> you… it cannot… no evidence can prevent the murder. So right now we are talking about preventing the murder of this planet. So there is no evidence, you just have to have life sense. If you listen to life, you know things are not the same. You don't have to look at data, what happened here, what happened there. Just feel the buzz of life, you know it's not happening as strongly as it should. Because that buzz in the soil is going down. On an average, they are saying, I don't know these numbers because I don't like this research and stuff. I am not a… you know, people invite me to speak in agro sciences conferences. And then they ask me, Sadhguru, how do you know all this? Are you a PhD in uh, soil sciences? I said, no, I am not a scientist. I am not a anything. I am like a worm. I've crawled on this planet for sixty-seven years and I know what the hell is happening. I'm asking you, does a worm know more about soil or a scientist knows more about soil? Because his life depends on it every moment. So, the problem is we are unconnected with the realities of our existence. We think everything can be sorted out with data and information and we thinking it out. No, we need little more life sense. So what is happening? What is the concern? Well, when I was… Uh, you know, when I heard that the COP26 happened in Glasgow, and many environmental ministers from various countries I met, and I asked, what are we doing about soil in the COP? Because I've been part of UNCCD, which is our desertification, I said, what's the Triple C doing about Soil? What soil? That's not our concern, we're not doing soil. I said, what you talking about? Climate change and you don't do nothing about soil, how is this? What is the problem with soil? I'm asking you a simple question. Leave all the data, one and one point five degrees centigrade, two degrees centigrade, you don't know all these things. On a summer afternoon, go stand in hot sun for thirty minutes, then move under a tree. You know what is climate change. Hello? Does climate change in the shade of a tree, I'm asking? Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Under the tree shade, does the climate change? Four or five degrees drops right there. So one important thing that needs to happen is more land should go under shade. Where is the data? God damn it, before you and me came, everything was under shade, large parts of it. We don't want to put North Pole and South Pole in shade, that's not the point. The tropical land should go under shade as much as possible. Maybe trees, maybe bushes, maybe cover crops, something should cover the land. Right now, we are plowing it and leaving it open. The interaction between the atmosphere or the oxygen and all the other aspects of the soil is releasing carbon dioxide in a massive way eighteen times more than what you release from every other industry on the planet, eighteen times more. One thousand eight hundred percent more we are releasing from the soil because of the plowed land. But nobody wants to talk about it because there's no money in it. There's life in it. Who is interested in life? Everybody is interested in money. Hello? There is no money in it. There is money in oil, there is money in coal. Everybody talking about this, nobody talking about soil because there is no money, you can't go and tell a farmer, you are the one causing climate change. You are finished, he will handle you differently. So right now, I am not saying fossil fuels are not at all a problem, yes they are. But somebody is drilling oil, somebody is digging coal, not for pleasure, because everybody is using it. Everybody is using it, that is why they're digging. If nobody is using it, why will they dig or drill? It's not going to happen. So why are they using it? Because just about everything that we do depends on it. We are talking about alternative energies, 
very important, very, very important, no question. But with all this talk for the last twenty-five years, we are not covering three percent of the world's requirement of energy with alternative energies. The ninety-seven percent bridge, when are we going to build? How are we going to do this? Unless there is some massive technological innovations, this is not going to happen. And nobody can time technological innovations. They may happen tomorrow morning. They may not happen for next twenty-five years, we don't know. We are striving, it may happen. If it happens, fantastic. But when we say soil, ninety-five percent of life on this planet depends on soil. Sixty percent of the species live in the soil. Fifty-four percent of the world's human population every day work with soil. Small farmers, and how come we are not interested in this? If whatever the budgets that they're talking about, today they're talking about a trillion dollars for climate mitigation, if ten percent of that is dedicated towards soil to incentivize the farmer to raise the organic content in the soil, it will happen in eight to ten years' time, there will be a significant turnaround. Now, what is the problem? The problem is just this, we are doing industrial level of agriculture. What this means is we are plowing massive amounts of land. In the land, the soil, the first eighteen inches of soil on this planet, which is called the topsoil, is the largest living system, not just on this planet, in this known universe because it has trillions of species of organisms, which are the foundation for all of us. It is the largest living system, but we are starving them to death. We are of course trying to feed them with plastic, they are not eating, they need organic content. Organic matter is all that they can consume, and that organic matter, if it has to come, there are only two sources. Even today somebody asked me, can AI solve the organic matter? <laughs> there is no technology for this. Technologies can enhance some things, but there are only... I want all of you to listen to this carefully. There are only two sources of organic matter on this planet. There are only two sources of organic matter on this planet, plant life and animal life. There is nothing else. If you are imagining something else, it doesn't exist. There is no technology, there is no nonsense anywhere. There are only two things, plant life and animal life. Now, in the farmlands of the world today, where is a tree or where is an animal? Machines are doing the work. Nothing wrong with the tractor, it's just as it doesn't shit, that's the problem. No, no, don't think I'm saying something. I want you to understand nature is functioning as a cyclical process. If you just cut one link, then the rest of them will collapse in a period of time. We started cutting this link about seventy to eighty years ago, now slowly other things are dissipating because we are not feeding the organic organisms in the soil, there is no organic matter because there is no plant life and there is no uh, uh, animal waste. Photosynthesis, as we were talking about it, is the most important phenomenon on this planet. And in the last thousand years, we have reduced photosynthesis on this planet by eighty-five percent. What is our plan for the future generations? Eighty-five percent drop in photosynthesis. Everybody is talking about the carbon dioxide percentages in the atmosphere. Why is nobody talking about the oxygen percentages? Thousand years ago, oxygen percentage is supposed to have been around thirty-two percent. Today it is twenty-one percent. The very way we live, the breathe, think, act, the whole potential of being human is being slowly reduced because the oxygen content in the atmosphere is going down.
carbon dioxide is there, that is an issue, but plant life and photosynthesis is the best way to bring carbon, uh, carbon dioxide which is there into carbon and put it in because all the organisms are waiting for that carbon. It just has to come in the right way. You can't just capture it in a machine and pump it into the earth, that's not the solution. Plant has a process and this is something fundamental, I was just surprised when I spoke to various environment ministries, agro-scientists. <laughs> the unfortunate reality is most people, I'm sure most people in this room also are not aware that a plant cannot get its nutrients from the soil directly by itself. Only through the agency of microorganisms, it can get the nu nourishment. Otherwise, a plant cannot take it. We are deceiving ourselves by throwing some chemicals and the plant bursts out. No, the important thing is, we are not interested in food, we are interested in nourishment. And the nourishment values in the world are going down so significantly, many studies have been done. But in United States, the, it's a little more measurable, so I will use this example. In 1920, if you ate an orange from California, what nourishment it gave you, if you want to get the same thing today, you will have to eat eight oranges. Anybody here ate eight oranges? You would have turned orange by now, by color, I'm saying. That is the drop, that means over eighty-two to eighty-three percent drop in nourishment has happened in our food values. So, our very existence, our very human potential, the human genius, everything is crushed simply because oxygen levels are going down and nourishment values are going down. The first sign of this is human software is beginning to collapse. Mental health is not an individual problem anymore. Mental health is becoming a global pandemic and in the next fifteen to twenty-five years, you will see this as a major problem unless we do something significant right now. As a part of this, in 2025, we're launching a movement called Miracle of Mind. Our mind is a miracle, what do you think? Hello? This is the only miracle we have seen, rest are all stories, fairy tales. The only miracle we have seen is human mind which can do tremendous things. But right now, for most people, it's become a misery manufacturing machine. It is all the human misery. Where is it manufactured? In Baku, is it? Hello? Where is the manufacturing unit? All in our head. What should have been a miracle has become misery simply because of variety of things. One important thing is, it is not getting the necessary oxygen nor the nourishment for it to function at a certain level. So soil is very, very important because soil is the basis, the very body that you carry is soil. What we eat is soil. This building is built out of soil. Just everything that we are seeing here, all life that walks on this planet is soil. If we get it now, we can make a difference. Otherwise, one day, of course, we'll get it from the maggots. It's just late. It's good for the soil, but not good for us. Can I tell you a joke? This happened in 2060. In 2060, a few scientists sought appointment with God. They got the appointment. They went there and said, Hey, old man, you've done a pretty good job with creation. But everything that you can do, we can also do now, time you retire. God said, oh, is that so? What can you do? Give me a demo. So they dug up a little bit of soil, made a vague image of a human child and did all kinds of things and in ten minutes the child came alive. God said, very impressive, but first get your own soil. Everything, everything that you know as life is soil. If we don't turn this around in the next ten to fifteen years, we will be the worst generation on this planet in terms of future generations' experience. Let's not be that. Let's make this happen. Save soil.